Thank you so much, Dr. Clawson. And uh, as much as you might think that I've got a very challenging job, I got to tell you, this is the best part for me, coming out to uh, an institution as distinguished as Damon College. Uh, it's a real honor. It's a real honor to represent you in Congress, uh, your employees, your students, and uh, your alumni. Because uh, I want to be a good voice for all of you, all of Western New York. But I also want to know that I understand the contributions that higher education makes to our society. Um, not just because it's important for a society to have young people who are trained to be in the workforce, but the research and development that goes on here, the innovation that goes on here. And we had some conversations about ideas that you have, the niche that you're developing, whether it's to help our veterans with Patrick Welsh and his center, or to have a specialty in the critical wounds that are plaguing so many families. The research and work that you're doing here is not only good to make us a better society, but in my judgment, the best part is that it translates into jobs. And that is my highest priority in Congress, is to make sure that we support our colleges and our universities with research and development grants so they have the ability to innovate, work with the students, the teachers, and come up with new ideas that ultimately will translate into new jobs in our community. So these young people that were making a lot smarter between their freshman year and their senior year when they come to Damon College, will have a job to go to. They don't have to get on a plane. They don't have to get in their car and drive hundreds of miles away for an opportunity. Those opportunities belong right here in West New York. We are a great community. We've got to continue boasting about it and being our best uh, cheerleaders and to have a gem like Damon College. Uh, this is something to be treasured. It really is. I don't think you realize uh, how good you've got it here. And to have leadership like Dr. Clausen and, and your management team, your cabinet and your trustees uh, with Caroline, it doesn't get any better than this. So I consider it a supreme honor to represent all of you, and I am all ears. I am the type of person who doesn't like to talk a lot because oh, my husband might disagree on that. Uh, uh, I, I'd rather listen, and that's what I've been trying to do during this so-called August vacation that they've defined it as, um, 12 to 14 hour days, getting in the car every morning and heading to any one of the corners of my seven counties that I represent. Um, very fortunate to represent all the way from Amherst, to Greece, down to Livingston County, and all the space in between. So it's a, it's a large geographic area, but I have uh, some really incredible cultural institutions. I've got, I've got Damon College, I've got Community College, I've got UB, Geneseo, uh, all the way over to uh, the suburbs of Rochester. So I spend a lot of time in these communities talking to people. And when I have a chance to do a Congress on your corner, and I've offered to do something along those lines here to have a community forum right here on campus to help promote this college, it gives me a chance to come into direct contact with the people who put their faith in me and sending me to Washington. And I feel I owe that to them. I need to be accessible. I need to look them in the eye. I need to know, I need to hear in their voice what troubles them and how I can be their best advocate, their loudest voice on Capitol Hill. And I would think that the ones who are telling me that they're so disappointed, that they're fed up, they're disgusted with what's going on in Washington, I will tell you that I agree with them. Because what, what Congress, with this country through during the month of July was unconscionable. We knew we had a job to do. I was sworn in on June 1st, and on that date, we knew very full well that we had our obligation to ensure that America paid its bills when the debts came due on August 2nd. And if we didn't increase the debt ceiling, there would we'd be wreaking havoc on an already fragile economy. And who does that intentionally? Well, I got to tell you, Congress did. We knew that was coming, and if we did not take action in a timely fashion, each day that passed during that month, we got closer and closer to the brink, and people could not demonstrate a willingness to compromise, we were responsible for that. So I'm an optimist by nature. I hope that we've seen the worst, and that when we get back to our jobs in Washington after Labor Day, that we don't do this again to our country. It's a great country. And I thank God that our founding fathers found it in their hearts to compromise, because if they didn't, we wouldn't have a country. So I said this on the floor of Congress, and I'm looking over both sides of the aisle when I said this, that we've got to find in our hearts to compromise, stop digging our heels in, and do what the American people sent us here to do, because otherwise, we don't belong here. We don't deserve this supreme honor of representing our districts and our country in Congress. So I find it a very humbling experience I really truly do. Every day I walk in there and, I, and I'm seeing the Capitol Dome and uh, I'm in awe of it. I really am. 
and that responsibility weighs heavily on me. When I come out here and I, I talk to people and I see what you're doing every day, making our community better, I'm inspired. I'm inspired to work hard for you because I want you to be proud of me and I want to do the very best I can to make this a better community and to do what I can to make a lasting contribution the way Damon College has in our community. So thank you very much.